All right, guys, so this is the blood work taken from July 18th. And I got this back a few days ago, so it took a little longer than normal because some of these tests were more advanced. Now, I didn't get as extensive a panel done as I did last time back in April, so it's been about three months since the last panel, which was at the end of April. But I didn't need to check everything like last time. So this is some stuff I kind of wanted to touch up on. Now, you're going to see first the anemia profile which we've got like iron, B12 in there, all sorts of stuff. But the main reason I want to check iron was because it was a little low on the previous test. And obviously, with the higher iron production, I'll have more red blood cells, a higher hematocrit and hemoglobin level, which will help with oxygen processing during running. So that's really good from an endurance standpoint. Now, an easy hack around this would be a TRT. If you're on testosterone, it's automatically going to raise your red blood cells but I'm obviously not doing that, so I'm trying to do it a natural way. And I've been supplementing 25 milligrams of iron bisglycinate per month, which is a more absorbable form of iron as opposed to ferrous sulfate, which you will often see at the grocery store. But I have not been eating as much red meat at all. I really kind of slacked on the diet pretty hard this last couple of months. Wasn't eating ground beef like I was prior to this. So even with the iron supplementation, you can see that the iron level is almost dropped in half from 95 to 49. So this also makes me question if I'm getting the iron absorbed at all, if there's any point of taking it, or if, uh, you know, I'll probably use up the bottle and double the dose of iron bisglycinate that I was taking to 50 milligrams, but I added back in a pound of ground beef per day, and that should do more for the iron levels than the, the actual iron supplementation. But you can see like 95 is where the iron was at with ground beef, whereas without it, it's at 49, even with iron supplementation. And that's also reflected in the iron saturation level, which went from 37 down to 19. So you're just not getting much out of iron supplementation, it appears. It's not very bioavailable. Um, whereas something like vitamin B complex, I take Jaro's Super B. That looks like it, it hit the spot pretty good here. Vitamin B12 went up or vitamin B12 was at 1,092, pretty good reading at the top end of the reference range. Full late levels were very high. And B-complex is a supplement I feel has a lot of legitimacy. You know, I've t I take it right before bed and I notice my sleep patterns are much better when I take B-complex before bed. There's a lot more REM sleep. Um, I feel a lot more rested. And part of that could be that thiamine levels can help with sleep. So if you have sleep apnea, you're depleting your thiamine levels. Now, I don't necessarily think I have sleep apnea anymore because I'm 200 pounds body weight as opposed to before I was like 240, 250. But that could be where B-complex comes in because it has B6, B, B12, B1, which is thiamine, um, B3, niacin. It's got all sorts of stuff. So B-complex is a supplement I'm going to continue to take that I feel really works. Um, it also has choline in it, which is really good for your brain. So B-complex, definitely going to keep taking that. I will keep taking the iron, but I don't think it really was doing anything. I was also taking Kamu Kamu, which is a form of vitamin C, to aid the iron absorption, which vitamin C has been shown to do. But I don't think that really did anything either. So liposomal vitamin C would probably be the better choice, but I don't know how much that would actually help either. So I'm just going to continue on those supplements. But I, once I run out of the iron and the, vit the Kamu Kamu vitamin C, I'll stop taking them because I don't think they really did anything at all. Whereas the B-complex, I'll continue on for the foreseeable future. Now, let's go to the CBC, white blood cell count right in the middle of the range. That's about where you'd expect it if you're not sick. Red blood cells weren't that much lower. And hemoglobin and hematocrit actually went up a little, but still pretty low. I would ideally like my hematocrit closer to 45 maybe even upper 40s. You know, we saw this with Brock Covington when I looked at his blood work. His hematocrit was 48. And this is in direct reference to him living at altitude in Colorado Springs, about 5,000 feet. So he had a higher hematocrit production um, because of that. And that's what I'm kind of trying to mimic by driving my iron up to get the red blood cells higher, hoping that works. But obviously it looks like beef does more than actual iron supplementation. Now, the neutrophils to lymphocyte ratio, those are white blood cells. You want to get those as close to a one-to-one -one range as possible. Obviously, neutrophils are always going to be the highest amount of white blood cells in the human body. But the closer that is to one-to-one, -one, the less overall inflammation is going on. So that's what we aim for.
eosinophils are elevated, which are due almost I, I, almost exclusively to allergies. So eosinophils go up when you have allergies. Allergies are a big time thing in East Tennessee. We pretty much have that kind of stuff year round with pollen and such. I take loratadine some days to combat my allergies, but that's what's going on there. TSH 2.7 went up from 1.7. So I do think this is again correlated to diet. My diet has been fairly loose the last three months because I've been running and I'm so lean anyway that I haven't really worried about it. But I clearly need to tighten it up to some degree to aid some of these hormones like TSH, like the iron levels, all that sort of stuff. I'm going to tighten it up a bit. The same could be said for glucose going from 80 to 85 on this test. It was 80 back in April and that again is probably correlated to diet. Now, I'm going to look highlight BUN and creatinine and then EGFR. Those are all kidney functions. Those are the three kidney functions you're going to see on a comprehensive metabolic panel. Now, creatinine does not take into account muscle mass, so it's often that your estimated glomular filtration rate, EGFR, is lower than what it actually is if you have muscle because it's not accounting for muscle mass. So I'll get into this later, but you will see that the EGFR here is lower than it is based off cystatin C. And cystatin C later on, we'll see, is much a much greater predictor of overall kidney health. But 88 is still not bad, 1.14 creatinine. Then we've got the uh, electrolytes all, all in range. A to G ratio is largely genetic. Mine's always kind of a little elevated. It's a genetic deal. Um, it's pretty much always like that. ALT a little high. I take this from the training from the 40 miles of running per week, from the, uh, the lifting, all that sort of stuff. There is a little bit of uh, liver stress from all of that. It's not crazy. Like if this was, you know, 70 plus, I'd probably start to be like, all right, I need to add in Tudka, and acetylcysteine stuff like that to combat it, but I'm not too concerned. I did not take time off from training going into this, which would bring that number right back down. Testosterone 487, again, I've been eating pretty bad, very little protein. So 487 is 13 points down from 500 nanograms per deciliter on the last test. I think with some, you know, higher protein levels from ground beef and, you know, possibly trying out something like Tonkata Lee again, or Fidoja Agrestis, or even Boron to try to drive up the free test, which you'll see here is, is quite low at 60 or 63. There it is. So those are all options. I think I can get tests back to 600. I really do. Um, but I do need to tighten the diet up a little bit first and foremost. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that, all things considered, and all the running I'm doing. Let's go to ADMA and SDMA. So these are kind of newer tests that have, uh, they're not really seen a lot. But ADMA is more of a cardiovascular health marker because it shows inflammation of the endothelial cells of the arteries. And this ADMA, basically, the higher the level is, the more it impedes nitric oxide production, which is important for heart health. So the lower this is, the better, and mine's in a really good range, which, you know, there's a ton of risk factors for heart disease. You want your ADMA low, you want your homocysteine low, you want your apolipoprotein B low, all that sort of stuff. And then there's like lipoprotein little a, which I had a genetic... Um, uh, it's more of a genetic thing and mine's always crazy elevated. So I try to keep these other biomarkers lower that are heart related um, to try to be healthier. SDMA is related to the kidneys. Mine falls right in the middle of the reference range. So pretty good spot to be in. Kidneys look to be in really good shape. Let's go to apolipoprotein A and B. Apolipoprotein A is the carrier for the HDL cholesterol. Apolipoprotein B is the carrier for the LDL cholesterol. Apolipoprotein B is really the most important one, and this is much more important and a much more accurate indicator of cardiovascular health than your standard lipid profile with HDL, LDL. Those are kind of outdated now as far as you can have normal HDL and LDL ranges and still have a heart attack, but things like ADMA, apolipoprotein B, this kind of stuff is what you want to really look into and keep down. So 88 here, it went up a little. Again, with proper diet, I think I could get this below 80, which is the range I'd shoot for without statin intervention or azetamibe or anything like that. Um, but overall, I'm, I'm fairly happy with this. And the only supplements I take, guys, I take um, vitamin B complex, vitamin C in the form of Kamu Kamu, which I think is doesn't work, 
vitamin D3, 5,000 IUs, that definitely works. Um, and then I've been taking vitamin K for processing the vitamin D, not getting calcium buildup in the arteries, plaque buildup. And then I have also been taking iron. And then I take kidney support from time to time from Leviathan. You can use code PETE for 10% off. That definitely works too, but I don't take that all the time. Now you'll see I haven't taken kidney support, so I do think that helped the EGFR level a little bit in cystatin C. Now this is the best kidney function reading I have ever personally seen, and the owner of Leviathan it's the best he's ever seen. So that would say my kidney function is better than basically anybody's we've ever seen. Um, 131 EGFR, with, which you compare to the EGFR based off creatinine, was 88. So the higher the number here, the better. The, the better your kidneys are functioning. Um, really happy with this. This is Cystatin C is one of those things you should check once a year to see your kidney function because a lot of you guys lift weights, you have muscle mass, and if you just go off a standard creatinine test, it's not going to read accurately. So we want to look at EGFR based off Cystatin C to get a more accurate picture. And I just check this once a year um, to kind of see where the kidneys are at. Really happy with that. Like I said, I was taking three pills three caps of kidney support per day for like six weeks before this, which likely improved it a smidge because it's founded on astragalus, which is the most kidney protective supplement out there. That's the main ingredient in kidney support. Astragalus is a legitimate uh, supplement that will show up on blood work as the most kidney protective supplement you can take. Whereas like Tudka is the most liver protectant supplement you can take. So there's all sorts of stuff. Estradiol went down a little, which is likely from being so much leaner. On the last test in April, I was uh, 221 pounds, and now I'm obviously 200 pounds. Big difference there. Homocysteine is kind of an inflammatory marker, which can show cardiac health, and this comes down with B-complex. B-complex directly lowers this inflammatory signal in the body, which is all the more reason to take B-complex on a consistent basis. And then we have uh, T3 and all that. About the same as last time, pretty good. And that really does it. So let's go to the bottom here. We'll see the ADMA again, which is the cardiovascular inflammatory marker. 65, optimal range. You know, overall, I'm really happy with these blood test results. Done, cleaning up the diet a little bit, having a pound of ground beef per day, that sort of stuff. Supplement-wise, I don't think I'll add anything in yet, but once I run out of what I'm taking, I will get it down to B-complex, D3, vitamin K2, those are going to be the three staples. And then I might throw in some Tonkata Lee again or Boron, which I think help a little bit with test levels. But I'm overall, I'm really happy with this. Now, if you guys found this video to be informative, if you got, you know, if you learned something from this, please subscribe. There's only about 50, 45% of you who view the videos who are subscribed. It's going to help me grow the channel. This channel is going to really be about getting as strong as possible getting as healthy as possible and developing our endurance. That's what it's going to kind of uh, segue into all those three aspects. The hybrid lifestyle, which is starting to become really popular. That's what I'm going to be, be, all be about. So if you guys like the video, give it a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. I really appreciate you guys um, just kind of going down a different path here, but still developing the strength, still training hard. And I really appreciate all of you guys. So that'll do it for me.